Let's go into the five ways to call in the one, to attract the one, all those things. Step number one, principle number one is you must decide that it is possible. Hear me, guys. Everything that ever happens for you starts with a decision that it's possible. Literally, it could be as easy as you must decide that you can walk and go get coffee down the street. It starts with a decision, though. So you must decide that it's possible for you, which goes back to some what I was speaking about earlier, which is whatever, whatever faith or, or system you believe in, whatever God or whatever that thing is, do you believe that thing has forsaken you or do you believe that thing loves you enough that it's possible for you to also meet your one? Often we get so attached. Every guy has to be the guy. And I'm reminding you to let go and let God just make the decision We got to start with the decision. Yes, it's done. I'm in process. I'm calling it in. Now I get to work. That's number one. Principle number two, and this is a really big one, is be what you desire. Whatever you're calling in from that person, be it. I I cannot tell you how many times I've coached people who literally are none of the things they're asking for. They li- I want somebody honest. I want somebody discerning. I want somebody who's X, Y, and Z. I want somebody who's driven and, and has their, their, their life and their purpose and their business all together. And I'm like, yo, you don't have that together. You don't even have any, like half of that. Remember, we only attract who and what we are at any given moment. And I, it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be a vibrational match. If you are going to have this list, right? I'm not a fan of list. I'm not calling them wrong but I'm just not a fan of list. I didn't make a list when I called in Alexi. I just said, let me be the greatest version of me. Let me get so in alignment with my heart. Let me get so uh, clear about who and what I am that the only thing that can come to me is somebody who's also in that space. And that is exactly what happened. Did I have, did I visualize uh, love and scenes? And did I, like I I, I had a chance to go to Paris and I said, no, I'm going to wait because I want to go to Paris with my one. And I was, I, was, I was creating space. Ooh, let this land. I was creating space for my one years before I ever met her. So be what you're calling in. Guess what? She was doing the same. There was, there was things she was holding off. There was places she was, she, was, she, was, she was working in for the sake of what we are experiencing now. I couldn't be the parent or husband or anything that I am without the work that I did seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. All of that counted. Be what you desire. Uh, that's number two. Number three is be discerning with who you share your body with. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. And when you begin to swirl your energies with other people that do not vibrationally match with you, number one, it could be dangerous. I have had multiple clients who received the gift of herpes and HPV and a lot of other things through allowing their animal body to make the decisions more often than they, if they were in their conscious mind, would make that choice. So be careful who you share your body with. Such a sacred act. And I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying don't explore your edges and find out who you are and try kinky stuff and all of that stuff. And you can find safe people to do that with. Create boundaries and safety inside of that and, you know, do what you do, but just know there's consequences. Some of those consequences can be as detrimental as, as a uh, STD. And some of them can be emotional consequences. I've had that experience multiple times where I was flying high and I, you know, had sex with somebody who wasn't flying high but looked good to my animal body. And for weeks, weeks, my vibration was low. And I had to keep paying attention. What is that? Every time you make a decision from that space, this is the consequence. So pay attention. Number four, this one is near and dear to my heart and something that I share often. Number four is be present with who is in your space. And what I mean by that is if you're calling in the one, sometimes that's going to require you to date the two, the three, the five, the six, and the seven. 
what you don't want to do is skip slash miss the lessons, miss the, the things that will make you a better husband or wife later on. Because there's practice, there's reps. If I only went to the gym once a year, I probably wouldn't have the muscles that I was calling in. It takes practice. Everything takes practice. And so if somebody's in your space that, that you know isn't it, but, but there feels like there's something there for you, and you lean in. The, the two women that I dated before Alexi, I had those conversations with. One of them, literally, I remember this crystal clear. I was like, what do you think this is? And she was like, oh, I, don't, I don't think it's it. I was like, yeah, same. I said, do you want to continue? Do you want to like lean in and just see what happens if we just open our hearts and, and like learn from each other? Because I could be open to that. She said, yeah, I could be open to that as well. And so we entered the relationship knowing that we weren't it for each other. She was the two. But she set me up for the one. Be present. Wherever you are, you don't get to keep your heart shut down and then all of a sudden open it when somebody comes in. That's not how it works. Whatever you practice more of, you get more of. So if you practice in keeping your heart closed and keeping people at a distance, when you call in the one, that is exactly what's going to happen. And you may sabotage that which you've been calling in for years. Last one, number five, trust your intuition. There is a still small voice that is always speaking. Sometimes that voice gets clouded and drowned out by all the other noise of your genitals and society and swiping left and right and all the other things that are a part of uh, this uh, one living generation. But I want to remind you that there's something inside of you that knows that's beyond cognitive thought. If, you're, if you get a hit, that this isn't it, trust it and make decisions from there. If you get a hit that it is, trust it and make decisions from there. Trusting your intuition will literally never fail you. And I know for some of you right now, you're saying, but how do I know what's my intuition and what's, what's not? I can tell you briefly, and I'll, I'll do an entire podcast on this. Uh, for me, my intuition is the first thought, first thing that comes to mind, first thing that comes to heart. Boom, do that. Kiss her, grab her hand, give her a hug, ask her a question. That. Second thought, you sure? What if she, well, she looks kind of busy. Third thought, bro, she hasn't grabbed your hand. She hasn't asked you a question. Fourth thought, screw it. Just do it later. So the first thought was grab her hand. Second thought was talking me out of it. Third thought, I'm really out. And fourth thought, off to the races. Trust that, mm, that quick hit. Boom, there it is. What's that? What is it asking me? What is it telling me? Where is it leading me? There is so much magic when we trust our intuition. I hope that this landed for any of you. Relationships are the greatest workshop you'll ever get in. The most challenging, most challenging thing I've ever stepped into. And also the most fulfilling and the most rewarding. I wouldn't have my kids without Alexi. I wouldn't be the man I am today without Alexi. I wouldn't be as wealthy and abundant as I am without Alexi. My wife challenges the absolute dog shit out of me. And because of that, I am a better human. So just understand that what, when you say you're calling in the one, it isn't all rainbows and butterflies. It's real as fuck. And you're going to want to run. You're going to want to make up a story that this isn't the one. But it is. And you'll know, because uh, <laughs> on one breath, it'll feel extremely uh, elating and, and, and beautiful and abundant. And on another breath, it'll feel like scary. A lot will come up. You'll want to run because you're, you're so exposed. You'll want to run because they aren't giving you the attention that you want in the way that you want it at the moment that you want it. 